Welcome to another episode of All Access, and uh, it's uh, it's a great, great weekend, almost weekend. It's a nice, very nice Friday afternoon here in New York City, and I want to share with you uh, the world as I see it, and, uh, and mostly share with you some of the recent accomplishments in the Avalanche universe, um, and uh, maybe discuss a couple of things in the in the broader uh, blockchain context. So um, let me uh, let me start to share uh, this. The, these, these slides that give me some kind of an idea of what I want to say today. Let's first create an infinity zoom. Yeah, there we go. And, um, and then let's talk about, uh, about this. So um, let's see. It's the third week of, uh, of a gorgeous new year. It's going to be an exciting year. We're going to see a lot of differentiation between asset classes. Uh, we're not seeing that yet. We're seeing everything being coupled and we're seeing everything get deflated as the Fed does its talk. And um, it is, this is what they do. They, they miss out on opportunities to cool the system off as everything's getting heated. And then they come in with a sledgehammer and just start hammering around. And then everything goes down in tandem because obviously institutions are here and they have to sell things off. This will happen. Then they'll realize they overdid it and it will correct and so on. So there will be multiple dips and multiple buying opportunities. It is just the nature of things. But uh, uh, I just had a discussion internally inside the company. Um, there is only one big takeaway from everything I've seen in the last, I would say, six months. The crypto space is here to stay. It's, the, it's just too big to even, uh, it's just too big to touch. It's, uh, it cannot even be uh, legislated away. And uh, if they were to try to do that, there'd be, they'd be mayhem. So, um, so we're here, it's going to grow. Institutions are here, they're going to grow in number and in, in uh, total number of uh, funds locked. I am beginning to have conversations with people in adjoining areas saying, I'm, I'm building a startup and I want to sell some tokens. They're security tokens, but I want to sell them as tokens. So that's going to be the new mode. And uh, we're going to see many companies come to be uh, having uh, been seeded with uh, with coins in the you know in the front end, so that's going to be the replacement of, uh, of what you see on Nasdaq, NYSE, etc. Many other people in my position have this vision that you know one day Nasdaq will will just patch over, they will just convert. That's I don't think that's what's going to happen. We're going to see many newcomers just start life with tokens, and there will be token today's token markets will be the Nasdaqs and New York Stock Exchanges of tomorrow. They'll be acquired. Uh, by those, but uh, well, that's exactly what's going to happen, I think. Um, so at least my prediction, it's going to be a glorious world and there will be many other alternative assets and fortunes are going to be made on those. So it's an exciting universe. In this exciting universe, very recently, I had a very fun chat with uh, Anatoly from Solana and uh, uh, I think Ivan from, uh, uh, from Nier, uh, moderated by Hasib and Naval. Um, I thought it was a very fun discussion. I have a lot of respect for uh, Solana and uh, also for Nier. Uh, in fact, I have a lot of respect for all the other uh, L1s uh, that people are building. Um, if you haven't heard it, I think it's worth listening to. Um, and a couple of things stick out. And uh, at least for me, um, if you listen to it again, I would like you to sort of pay attention to maybe two or three takeaways from that whole discussion. I think one, there's a distinct difference in, in culture between how these chains are being developed and what they're targeting. So um, that, uh, that difference in culture is just, it just pervades everything. Uh, for Anatoly, for Solana, that culture is a performance first culture. And so they did a fantastic job of engineering their system. Uh, they also engineer their network. They keep out slow participants. They ensure that every participant is participating with a big, hefty machine, and uh, and they push the boundaries of what is possible with conventional consensus protocols. And uh, so much respect. Every now and then they have issues. So at the deep science end of things, um, they haven't solved some of the real problems in that space. And they have this, this thing that balloons into uh, an internal packet storm, I think. And that's why they keep having these likeness problems. I think today they had another one, or maybe last night they had another one. So, um, but you know, those things, you got to erase them. You know, so they're not all that important. Um, you shouldn't be having them all that often, but you know, every now and then people will have bugs and that's kind of okay. Uh, the markets understand this. They typically just absorb and, and just don't pay any attention. Uh, if you're having them all the time, 
then perhaps it's time to look at the science and it's time to look at you know what's wrong wrong with your system. But Solana's I think culture of performance first came through very 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 strongly, and uh, Near I think came in with essentially what they had, which is look we engineered this thing with with sharding from the ground up, and uh, that's fine. That's exactly what I would have expected from that team given their background. These are uh, engineers from Google, and they came in. They built something with the knowledge that they had, and um, that's that's a fine thing to be doing. Um, ours is different. We are science first. We brought innovation in a way that nobody else in this space did. You know, since in the last eleven years, since the uh, Satoshi white paper, nobody really innovated on that front. In fact, you know, there have only been three innovations in that space uh, in the space of consensus protocol families in 45 years of distributed systems history. Uh, we have classical systems, we have Satoshi, and then we have Avalanche. So we're science first, we are broad-minded, and that brings me to the second point of difference. Um, these other systems are monolithic, you know? So uh, Anatoly is doing uh, essentially just one system super fast, does one thing, does it really well, right? So that was really clear. Um, their main, main uh, transactions are very small, you can't really do the fancy kinds of things that people want to do in DeFi. You can't borrow, interact with one thing, interact with another thing, interact with another thing, and then return the funds with some profit. That's what you need to do in a, in a typical arbitrage trade on uh, on in DeFi. Um, and why can't you do this? Well, because Anatoly is charging the same price for all transactions. He has to put, he has to make sure that all the transactions fit in a packet. Then he has a, a packet limit size, a packet size limit, and then suddenly there isn't enough space to actually uh, specify everything you want to do. So that's, you know, one of the things, you, you know, one of the reasons why they're so heavy into NFTs and gaming, because that fits that model, and they can't really do DeFi uh, with that structure and with that culture. So we're different. We're, we gain our speed um, advantage from different science, different protocol. Uh, we're not actually well engineered. I would have to say this. We have a bunch of engineering to do. Uh, we could easily, not easily, but with some effort, we could actually eke out another, and potentially another uh, 3x in speed, maybe more, uh, if we were to pay attention to, to a whole lot of engineering issues. And also, uh, we, if we were to uh, ensure that everybody joins the network with hefty machines. So we haven't done that yet. Um, and near uh, near is also a monolithic. Oh, sorry, Solana though is a monolithic system. Right? It's it's just a one size fits all. They've got the one chain. It's fast and it's, it's doing what it's doing, and um, uh, it, it it just does what it does. Right. Um, same same or so very similar with near. Um, they have a sharding model, etc. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, Avalanche distinguishes itself among these three by supporting spaces, well, I'm sorry, by supporting subnets, uh, by supporting uh, different instantiations of virtual machines on different networks that all work together under the same umbrella. So uh, in that we are almost unique in a sea of 8,000 coins. There are only a few others like us, but Solana and Nier are not one of them. Um, and uh, Ethereum is not one of them. So uh, we, we have had this vision for a long time that the world is going to demand multiple blockchains. It's going to demand an extensible substrate. It's going to demand an extensible uh, software base where anybody can introduce their own virtual machine and build their own network according to their own custom rules. Why is this important? It's important for a whole lot of reasons. But one of the main reasons is that institutions, enterprises demand it. They need to have control over the full lifetime of, a, of an asset. And if you just throw the asset out there onto a regular chain with some code, you lose control. And you can get into very, very unwanted situations. Also, you need to be able to answer your legal department when they say, hey, you know, what are the rules governing the, this thing that we just turned into a digital asset? You have to be able to have some answer that trickles down to all the leaves, all the nodes on your network. So that's what Avalanche offers, and that's one of the main differentiating factors in Avalanche. So that brings me to my next topic, uh, subnets. So you've heard me talk about this quite a bit. Uh, you Not really, actually. You have not heard me talk about this all that much, but you might have heard you know, me mention that this is a big differentiator, that you can do things with them. And uh, I've been getting asked this question, like, what can you do with a subnet? And you were like, well, you know, here's the documentation, here's some code, here's some other code. But the code examples we had were on the extremes. We had a timestamp VM, which is very simple. 
We had the EVM, which is very complex. We didn't have enough in the, in the middle. So we just um, uh, unveiled this thing called Spaces. It's a subnet. This is Spaces virtual machine. And uh, it does one thing. It stores things. So uh, think of it like uh, something in between ENS and Filecoin with uh, maybe like IPFS thrown in there if you want. So what does that do? Uh, well, you know, you just, you claim a name, you can, in this case, Conrad, you know, you got Conrad, that's your name, let's say. And then under Conrad, you can store, you can associate uh, with various different key phrases, various different responses or values. It's a key value store. So, um, uh, so if you want to say, hey, I'm Conrad, Here's my address on a box. Here's my box address. And then you put your address in. Here's my Twitter handle. You could do that. Here's some content. You could do that. Uh, here's a directory full of content. You could do it. What kind of content? Well, here's my NFT content. And then that NFT content is no longer now your responsibility to hold. It's now being stored in the subnet. And this particular subnet is a fully replicated key value store. Every single participant is tasked with storing everything. So the chances that it will all get lost are, uh, are much, are in fact, 100%, actually, it turns out, because Spaces VM is deployed on testnet right now. Um, but uh, but uh, it is, uh, uh, once it's actually in production, once it's out of uh, this alpha release, then uh, the chances that it will be lost uh, is, uh, is, is hopefully very, very small because you have a whole full set of validators holding your fully replicated subnet for you. Um, although, so for the geeky people who are listening to me, um, we also released a whole bunch of uh, uh, tools that make it really easy to launch your own subnet. So we have this command line tool, which I happen to love. It makes it really, really simple to uh, create subnets just in three commands from the command line. Previously, you could still do it, but it would be like 12 different um, you know, postman invocations or RPC invocations. Now the command line tool makes it really easy. So now you guys have no excuse for not creating your own virtual machines that operate in your own subnets. It's time to do this. It's, it's a great time to build things. It's a great time to, uh, to build new things that other people are not building. And, uh, and I assure you, it's far more fun than trading. And, you know, much respect for trading as well. But, uh, but building things that other people want is so much more fun than, uh, than, than trading and making money. Um, okay, so then there is this whole uh, discussion from, uh, from Patrick's tweet thread. So, um, so you see there is this thing called try spaces.xyz. You can just go there. It's just the front end. Um, you know, once you go, once you download the, the JS, it doesn't matter where you pull it from. You could pull it from GitHub too if you wanted to. And uh, you can see all the validators that are validating. And as he says, it's on the Fuji testnet. It's not on mainnet. And uh, space is kind of like your digital home. Think of it that way. It's a place to store and share links, images, files, etc. cetera. Um, and you could make this be subject to whatever rule, rule set you like, um, you know, with, you know, with regard to your own validators. Um, and instead of living in a private server somewhere, your space, is, your space information is stored on a blockchain that anyone can validate and interact with. This, subspace, this, uh, this subnet, this space, is, uh, uh, is uh, run by a new coin called SPC. So that's pretty darn cool. Um, it is not a proof of work chain. It's, not, it doesn't, it's green, it's sustainable. And uh, you control who has SPC and what they can do with it. Uh, the only people who can make changes to a space are the owner, the person who claims the space. So you can go and claim it. Um, so, uh, uh, and then the owner is an EVM formatted address with a private key that is held in MetaMask. Amazingly, even though the underlying virtual machine is not EVM, it has nothing to do with the EVM. There's no Ethereum code whatsoever running anywhere in this. Uh, but we made it uh, compatible with MetaMask. So you can just go use MetaMask to interact with this thing, um, but uh, you're really interacting with a, with a new virtual machine written from scratch for storage with no vestigial anything from, from anything related to uh, any other chain that came before it. So, um, so now, uh, because we use this common standard, you don't need to download a new wallet. You don't need, you know, your users don't need anything special to get started. It just works for you. Um, and then we did a, a, an airdrop to about a million addressees that have interacted with the uh, Avalanche C-Chain. 
we gave them 10,000 SBC tokens. Uh, some of these folks went and, and did a land grab. You know, just about every name I looked up has been claimed. I luckily managed to claim my name, or rather, Patrick claimed them for me, I think. Um, and uh, so anyway, so so it's cool. So we all have our spaces. We can store items in them. It's it's kind of neat. Um, and you can go check it out. There's Yeah, you go to tryspaces.xyz slash Patrick to see what's there. And, uh, you know, if you want to look at his Twitter link and so forth, you can go find it. That's all Patrick's stuff. Um, and uh, so what it really is for the super geeky among you, it's an authenticated hierarchical key value store with EIP 712 compatibility. It has state expiry and a fee based metering. The state expiry is also kind of neat. Um, Patrick added this feature where the more you store in your space, the more quickly it expires. So you have to just replenish it every now and then with your SPC coin. SPC coins were worthless when we gave them out, zero cost basis given to everybody. Uh, should not be a tax burden or anything for anybody in any jurisdiction. So, so go wild. Um, it's just fun stuff. And uh, if you want to build your own, go build your own. Um, it's, I forget the licensing on it, but it should be all free to take and extend and, and, and play with. So, oh yeah, this is the, the command line interface. It's really nice and easy to use. And uh, it's new on audited code, should be treated as such. You should check it out. You should customize it. You should make it yours and uh, make it work for you. And, um, but I hope it gives you um, a glimpse into what one can do with spaces. It's immediately useful. It works now. You don't have to hold your breath and wait for, you know, Godot to arrive in like 18 months or whenever it is that these things are arriving. You don't need to know any fancy level, whatever. The interaction is so fast that users don't realize they're interacting with a blockchain. I've said this many times before. I said this three, four years ago. When Avalanche arrives, it will be so fast that it will, it will unveil a new era of services backed by blockchains where the users don't even know. They just think they're interacting with a service, but the service is hundreds, thousands of machines uh, providing it that are Byzantine, that some of which are Byzantine and, uh, and uh, uh, are, um, are essentially a collective effort. They're completely decentralized. So, so is it spaces and it shows you a, a glimpse of what is possible. I hope you guys take this. I hope you play with it. It's really fun. And, um, and there are so many other things one can do with subnets. And uh, I'm, I cannot wait to see the creativity uh, unleashed on, on Avalanche. So um, yeah, as Patrick says, we put it out. Uh, could we have made a product out of this? Yes. Could we have sold coins around it? Yes. We didn't do any of those things. We just put it out. It's not an official product. It's just a code base and a demo. So uh, we just want to show the world, hey, you can do this. It's possible. You don't have to listen to us. There is a shortage of people who are real builders in this space. And uh, we want to encourage them and say, look, here's some code. Here's some patterns. Anybody can take this and build cooler things on top. Go, go wild with it. So it's not a finished product. Don't complain to me if it doesn't do X, Y, Z, um, or you know you expected it to do something and it didn't or whatever, or if it's buggy even, um, it's, it's on testnet. So, um, uh, but uh, it's there for, for, uh, for the creatives among you to get inspiration from and uh, for the builders among you to, to have a, an example code base to build off of. So I hope you play with it. I hope it's, it's, it's as fun for you as it has been for us to build. Okay, so second topic today. Um, is uh, is the wars between like various different L1s? I think uh, I think some some groups went at each other, and uh, I think this 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 tweet I really liked it. It's uh, um, you know both Binance and FTX support Avox and Cchain, and Avalanche is the Switzerland of L1s. That's kind of true. Um, you know, there obviously I'm proud of the stuff we've built. And obviously, I'm a scientist, and if I see a problem with someone else's stuff, then I will call it out. Um, same scientists will also call out the problems that we have. I've been trying to be, I've, 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 well, I think I've, I've done a, a decent job of being fairly open and honest with every shortage, uh, every shortcoming in, in, in both our system uh, as well as others. So there will be some, some, some talk of neg negative stuff uh, on occasion on this stuff, on this uh, podcast, but uh, in general, We've, we've uh, been friendly with just about everybody else in the system. Why? Because we're very confident in our technology. It just works. It's just been working for a long time. We had one bug episode on February 9th, about a year ago. Uh, and uh, ever since then, it's been just working. And uh, 
Occasionally we have load spikes. We had an episode where the fees went very high and then we address some of the parameterization. That goes back to that engineering discussion that I had. We have to engineer certain parameters better uh, so, so we, can, uh, we can live up to the potential of the underlying technology we've got. So, so there's a bit of engineering tweaking that we have to do on occasion, but, uh, but we've been just working. And, um, and we are in a position where we can absorb the future growth. This area is gonna grow. It's going to grow by at least tenfold, if not a hundredfold. And um, the chains that have the architecture and the underlying technology to absorb that growth are going to be the ones that grow. So, uh, so I'm really excited about what is to come. And we don't need to get into a, you know, a tete -a -tete, you know, like a head banging situation. Um, it's easy though, if you're an opinionated techie, it's so easy to get drawn into these battles and somebody says something stupid and then you have to correct the, the, the one person on the internet who's wrong, which you should never do, but I find myself having to correct them and then you get drawn into these, these, these fights and discussions. But in general, we don't need to do that. This, the tech speaks for itself. So I'm really happy about that. And on that note, I want to share with you some numbers. Um, we had, just a few days ago, we had more than a million transactions per day. That was pretty darn awesome. So these are real, genuine transactions. There's absolutely no incentive for us to put any more load on our system. In fact, I want to reduce the load on the system. And I've been talking to various teams to optimize their code uh, so as to, to reduce the fee spikes we have uh, on our system. So, uh, so it's kind of odd um, uh, that uh, it's not odd. It's fantastic to see this level of, um, of interest in what we've got. So a million transactions is about 83% of what Ethereum did. And on that day, I did a transfer on Ethereum and it cost me $12. And I did a swap on Avalanche. So swap is a much more expensive operation. I did a swap on Avalanche and it cost me 12 cents. I can show you the transaction IDs if you like, but uh, there a, was a clear 100x difference in fees paid between the two systems. And our underlying technology is such that I, I believe we're going to be able to keep this up way beyond 100% of Ethereum's capacity. So, um, so it's gonna be fun. Um, our daily active wallets, it reached a, uh, an all-time high so of uh, 137,000 users. So that's pretty darn awesome as well. Um, again, there's zero incentive for anybody to, to fake those numbers. Other chains have like weird, uh, you know, they've collected money in a way where to un unlock their, their, the money they collected, they need some number of, you know, they need certain uh, milestones met and, um, you know, they need to like fake uh, or whatever it is, uh, create some activity on their chain. Some chains spam themselves with weather data, et cetera. None of that is happening here. So this is just organic growth. And uh, my focus is entirely on the software side, on the architecture side, and on, on uh, various developments on, on so future vision side. And uh, we're not doing anything. So um, it's just daily active wallets is 137,000. This is a lot of people using this on a daily basis. And uh, yes, and Luigi just swapped an asset for 17 cents. Yeah, same day, later on, I swapped for 12, 12 cents. So that's a swap. It's, uh, you know, whatever you pay on your chain, go, go compare it to this one. Um, so uh, there's some hockey stick action going on. Uh, this, is a, this is a comparison to Phantom and Terra, also very worthwhile uh, systems and uh, that have experienced a lot of growth lately. And uh, you can see the, uh, the daily active wallet count on, uh, on Avalanche, just doing that that thing that it does on occasion, it's it's great to see. Um, so uh, yes, eighty four percent of uh, the daily transactions that Ethereum was handling that day. This is this is I think the next day that Jay is reporting from, and uh, and the bridge is in uh, our bridge is uh, is uh, has a lot of value tied up in it, about six billion dollars. It is the number one. Um, uh, most valuable application that uses SGX technology. SGX, by the way, was deprecated on client machines, as it should be. I don't think I want my machine running code that I cannot control. Um, that was the, the SGX on, on sort of retail machines, on home machines, was designed for digital rights management. It was designed for you to run applications, you know, games, um, Blu-ray players, and so forth where you can't change what happens inside the application. So um, Intel is backing away from that. I guess there just isn't enough money to be had there. 
but it's going to be fully continued on servers. So that SGX technology that we bet on has been a fantastic boost to us. It allows us to have the world's cheapest bridge that is a joy to use. And if you haven't transferred funds over, over to Avalanche from Ethereum, you should just try it. Just try it with anything. You'll, you'll see that you spend about two and a half minutes waiting for finalization on Ethereum. And then everything is instantaneous on the Avalanche side. And um, OK, and then final, one of, the, one of the last few numbers I want to show you today is um, an unmistakable, again, something that nobody can easily fake for any length of time, uh, is the amount of fees that people are spending on chain. You can fake this, you know, miners can fake these and so on, on proof of work systems, um, but you cannot fake them on a system like Avalanche where the fees are being burned. And, um, and what you want are you want the aggregate fees to be very high to indicate demand so that's what they indicate. These people really are coming here and they're spending their AVOX. There's demand for AVOX um, to the tune of a quarter million dollars every day uh, that people just need it. They need it for, for doing all of the, the operations they do with the DEXs, with the various lending platforms and so on. So you want the aggregate fees to be high, but you want each fee to be as low as possible. And that's exactly what we've got. Uh, in in, in uh, comparison, uh, Ethereum is uh, is doing uh, is the fees are like a hundred x or more higher, and um, uh, and it's doing a far slow, uh, it's doing a, its capacity is is lower than us. So we are the number three chain, and in terms of demand, there is more demand for space on the Avalanche blockchain in aggregate than there is for Bitcoin. Let me say that again: Avalanche is more in demand than Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the gold standard here. They've been around for 11 years. We all work to make it a big thing. Uh, it's a fantastic system, and it's a very, very well-designed system for what it does. And, um, you know, it's very much in demand. Everybody has heard of Bitcoin. Not everybody has heard of Avalanche at this point. Uh, but, uh, but even now, this thing is so useful that it's more in demand than Bitcoin. So I'm really proud of that. Um, and, uh, and it's more in demand than uh, some of the higher ranked coins like Solana is, is, also, uh, is also on this list and uh, it's lower. Um, Cardano is higher in, in terms of market cap and uh, as you might expect, the, uh, the aggregate demand is uh, higher for Avalanche. It just does more, that, that's why. And then if we look at TVL, um, then uh, uh, once again, we see a very similar scenario. Number one, of course, in terms of total value locked is Ethereum. Uh, number two is uh, Binance's smart chain, uh, which is an Ethereum clone that's fully centralized, uh, which is fine uh, as long as you understand what you're interacting with. And then the third, number three, in terms of total value locked is Avalanche. There's so much value on this system. I'm really proud of this. Uh, it all depends on, by the way, how you count the TVL. Um, we've got 11 billion by this particular metric. Um, there's another way of counting this, and if you do that, we are uh, it's a it's a bunch higher, um, and uh, we don't have liquid staking yet. That's about to come. We don't have a whole bunch of assets that we plan to unveil on our network yet. So uh, as they arrive, expect that uh, TVL to rise. I'm really excited about what's what's going to happen this year. So it should be a fun year for us. Um, speaking of new assets, we have one. Tether on Avalanche is now uh, enabled on Bitfinex. You can get native Tether. You don't have to have, we used to have USDT, we still have USDT.E, so Tether from Ethereum that's been bridged over. Um, you can use that, I, I use that, that's a useful thing to use. But you can also have native Tether. And uh, pretty soon we're going to have pools that allow you to swap from one to the other. I think Trader Joe already has such a pool and um, I'm, I'm excited to interact with it and maybe provide liquidity for it or whatever else. Uh, I'll take a look at, at what's happening and, and, and uh, interact with it accordingly. It's going to be a lot of fun, though. Oh, Platypus came online. This is an Avalanche native system. I, I love this footage. I don't know what the hell's going on between those platypuses. Uh, you know, do they like each other? Do they hate each other? But, um, but it is an Avalanche native system. Think of it like kind of like Curve. Uh, but it's using entirely new code base and entirely new infrastructure. I haven't looked into what it is. I don't know if it's safe or not. So, you know, play with it at your own risk uh, if you do. But um, uh, 
Uh, but it is there, and it's wonderful to see people experiment with new smart contract constructs on Avalanche. Why wouldn't you? It's cheap. It's got a great community, very positive people, and uh, lots and lots of people. Lots of value has been created. Lots of value exists on it. So there's a lot to do on it. And any, any asset you might want to interact with uh, is probably bridged onto it anyway, So it, or, or exists natively. So it's really cool that they came, and uh, it's really nice that you can now do um, interactions with Platypus because it uses a different infrastructure and a different, slightly different math under the covers than Curve. You can do swaps that are far more efficient uh, than, uh, uh, than other systems. That's their claim. Uh, so you can trade with far less slippage on Platypus than other, other uh, areas. Um, their coin uh, setup is also exciting. So the PTP coin, I think, did really well. Um, I haven't looked into this at all. Uh, all I know is that people are reporting that they 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 did really well uh, with with PTP. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But you know, putting PTP performance aside, the actual core system is 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 neat. It's got something uh, at its crux that's uh, appealing to to techies. I think. Finally, we have uh, our latest release. It's a backwards com. It's just a maintenance release. Um, it does um, it does one thing. It creates some new indices. Um, behind the scenes. So uh, so you should upgrade to this. When you do upgrade behind the scenes, it's going to create what we call an index. It will take a whole bunch of chain data and store it in, a, in an additional database. So that additional database allows our nodes or will allow our nodes with the next uh, release, will allow our nodes to sync much faster. So when you bring your node up, you should be able to come up uh, very, very fast. So uh, these are all. This is all developed at uh, at uh, at Ava Labs, and uh, it's doing new things on the C chain that allow us to to synchronize very very fast. And there's a synergistic thing going on because our consensus protocol achieves finality so fast. We don't need to have the complexity that uh, that Ethereum has to have because they can actually flip. They can they can be subject to reorganizations on their chain because they use proof of work. So um, so that's. Uh, uh, so that's what it is. It makes their life very complicated. Everything they do has to be done in a manner that's consistent, even when you do a reorg. And you need to be able to very quickly go from one consistent state, one consistent tip, to another tip. And in so doing, you need to undo a whole lot of side effects and go back to uh, go go and execute a whole bunch of new to transactions on a different chain. So um, on the C chain, life is a lot easier for us when things things become final very fast. And once they're final, they're final. So um, uh, so that's a nice situation. It allows our code to be uh, done far, I don't know, far more easily, I think. Um, also, we have a fantastic team. Let me not, not shortchange them. Um, but um, uh, combined, I think I'm really thrilled about this. Uh, this is a way to bring your node up super, super fast. And uh, and so you know it should be very easy to to bring up an avalanche uh, avalanche C chain node. That's it for me today. Um, it's like in my usual fashion. I think I ran through a whole lot of issues very very fast. I've been told to slow down. I will try. Well, I don't know. Let me know what you think. I can slow down. Now every time I watch TV, I'm struck by how slowly they talk. And um, I think people appreciate you more if you talk a little bit more slowly and give people time to digest what's being said. But that's so not me. Um, anyway, so I'm a little bit more high strung, I guess, and tend to run through everything on my mind before I forget. Um, but anyhow, it's been a fantastic week for us, uh, technologically speaking. It's been a decent week for us uh, for as a space, as the cryptocurrency space. It hasn't been a great week for the markets. I'm not a market analyst. I do expect the markets to, to do all sorts of things. They're going to go up and down and up and down, manipulated by those uh, in power. And I cannot wait for decentralized solutions that eliminate as many of those kinds of interferences as possible. The people with the money spigots, the people who are in a position to print money are, uh, are the ones that, that can cause all sorts of fluctuations up and down. And, um, and by knowing when they're going to do those things, of course, uh, them and their friends are in a very, very pri privileged position to benefit. So power to them. Um, we are coming uh, as the crypto space. And uh, we are here to disrupt, and we're here to change that power dynamic to a, to a much more trustworthy new uh, foundation. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, have a wonderful weekend. I cannot wait to build more and share more, more techie stuff with you in the coming weeks. Take care.